its time. <clears throat> so namaste, good morning Houston, good evening India, and namaste to all of you. So uh, today uh, there was a request to show more uh, videos on uh, mudras, but uh, to start that, first I would like to explain the science behind these mudras. So you must have heard, I told you all about uh, energy, which is known as prana, pran in our uh, Indian or yogic system. And it is known as energy in English, and it is known as ki in Japanese and chi in Chinese. So if you know about acupuncture, acupressure, it works exactly in the same manner. So what is the science behind it? Let me, let me connect the acupuncture and our mudra therapy. So basically, as you all know that uh, the meridians in acupuncture, they are called meridians. Meridians actually are the channels in nadis in our body. Again, the meridians cannot be seen. And they do the puncture in those meridians to remove the blockages so that the uh, chi can flow freely uh, through those meridians. And whatever problem or the, whatever the diseases a person is suffering from, whether it is uh, your back problem, heart problem, your kidney problem, uh, your uh, spondylitis, acidity, all uh, or uh, any kind of stomach problem, any kind of problem can be resolved by doing puncturing of those meridians. Okay, and uh, in uh, mudra, in mudra therapy, as you as I told you all that uh, uh, in both the system, the uh, Chinese system and the yogic system, energy channels are open. So uh, we have seventy two thousand channels in the body. And obviously they have their end. They end somewhere. And those ends are open. And uh, uh, as opposed to the closed circuit, uh, energy can enter and it can leave through those channels. And uh, so the energy, we keep on losing that precious energy through our hands, fingers, feet, uh, toes, and head. And Mudra, what does a mudra mean? Mudra means seal. Seal. So what does it do when you do any hand posture? It seals that, uh, that any a meridian or that channel. And by sealing that, the energy cannot escape. It remains in your body. And you get benefit out of it. And the flow becomes very fast by doing that. So now let's come back to meridian. In meridian, there are 14 important meridians. In uh, uh, nadis also, there are 14 important nadis. Okay? And out of those 14 important meridians, five are the most important one, and they are connected with your five important organs, those meridians. They are called lung. The lung is connected with your thumb. Then your large intestine is connected with your tip of the index finger. Then your heart is connected with your middle finger. Your uh, ring finger is connected with your triple uh, heater stomach or triple heater. Triple heater is known as your jathagni, stomach and your uh, liver and all those. It's called triple heater because and uh, adrenal gland because it gives you fight and flight issues. It, it takes care of that. So, and it is that triple heater, those important organ of your body is connected with your ring finger, ring finger, okay? And then your small intestine is connected with your little finger. Now, I told you all about the heart mudra. Let's understand the science behind it. In heart mudra, what you do, you uh, put your index finger at the base of your thumb and join the tip of your thumb and uh, your middle finger and the ring finger. This mudra, what it does, it directs the flow of prana from the hand to the heart, straight up. Because improving the vitality of the heart, the middle and the ring finger, the middle and the ring finger are connected with your heart. As I told you that your heart, your, uh, the lung 
and the heart is connected with your thumb, middle finger, and triple that stomach, which connects uh, your, uh, uh, which redirects your prana into all part of your body. The triple uh, warmer, which is your uh, important stomach organs. So when you do this mudra, it the prana flows directly to your heart. And if there's any kind of blockages in your heart, it gets restored. It gets, sorry, it gets cured by doing this mudra. And what it does, it, uh, it closes the circuit, a circuit uh, of the pranic flow and act as an energizer. So when you do this mudra, it closes the circuit, the prana doesn't escape. It gets redirected to your heart and it and that prana circuit it it, uh, it uh, works as an energizer, uh, energizer and whatever blockage you have in your heart slowly start melting them. That's what it does. Now, as I told you about those uh, mudras of uh, connecting with your uh, five elements again, those five elements and five fingers I told you. Thumb uh, works like a. a it, uh, it is connected with the uh, heat energy or uh, the Agni Tattva. Then your index finger is connected with your Vayu Tattva. Then your uh, ring, uh, uh, biggest finger is connected with your uh, earth ether element or the Akash Tattva. Then your uh, ring finger is connected with your Prithvi Tattva or uh, earth element. And your small finger is connected with your water Tattva or Ja, uh, sorry, water element or jal tattva. So when you do any kind of mudra, like suppose vayu mudra, so excess vayu gets either the uh, your thumb, which is connected with your uh, agni tattva or uh, your fire element, it burns away or it takes care of that excess vayu tattva. In those seven days, you must have tried out these mudras and you must have seen the effect of all these mudras. Now, today I'll be talking about the mudras in connection with your panch vayu. But before I explain those panch vayu mudras, you need to understand those panch vayus. It's important to understand what are those panch vayu. That is called uh, uh, five pranas. So, Ravi, can we have that first uh, video on the five, uh, that punch vayu, introduction on the punch vayu? Yes. Thank you. Prana or vital energy hey, of can't with you, the brother. body to maintain life. You have to share the uh, video and audio both. Prana or vital energy operates within the body to maintain life. Prana is a Sanskrit word which means vital energy or life force. Prana permeates everything in the universe. It is called Chi in Chinese, Ki in Japanese and Rua or breath of life in Hebrew. It performs distinct functions and manifests in different forms in our physical being. In each case, its specific function is called a Vayu. The word Vayu translates as wind, connoting all pervading movement. The root Va means that which flows and so Vayu is a vehicle for activities and experiences within the body or a force that moves in a specific way and 
in a specific area of the body. The practices of yoga, both asana and pranayama, are meant to optimize the functioning of these values as well as bring them under our influence so that their energies can be used to uplift ourselves and restore vibrant health. Though the prana is one, it assumes five forms according to the different functions it performs. These five values are associated with the five body-based chakras, but are still considered to be qualitatively inseparable from Mahaprana and are only distinguishable by their functions. These five principal values are important for the yogi to recognize. There are Abhanvayu, Samanvayu, Pranvayu, Udanvayu, and Vyanvayu. Each govern specific areas of the body and can be thought of as elemental forces in the body that govern not just the physical but emotional qualities and mental energies as well. Fundamental to physical, mental and emotional well-being. <clears throat> okay. So let's get back. So prana, as you know, we just explained it it flows in our body through four, uh, 72,000 channels. But in whichever direction they flow, they have been given name. You must have heard like uh, in Hindu, uh, the Havan happens. And whoever makes you do the Havan, they say, we will start with the, uh, the best Ahuti. So when you uh, uh, give Ahuti in the Agni, that is in the fire, you say, uh, and you say swaha. And uh, we start with apanai swaha, samanai swaha, vyanai swaha. So pran is an important thing. And you have to understand one more thing in our body. You know, uh, voltage. So you can actually connect prana, the energy, exactly like that voltage, that current. Okay? So uh, see our body as a, a as a building and in building we have to uh, to have the current uh, to for the flow of the current so that we can run our air condition our uh, fan uh, our uh, lights and all we have uh, uh, electric uh, cables and all okay right so just like that in our body to function all the organs our brain and all parts of the body we have energy system, the nadis, which are, which you can actually connect just like those cables that are put in the building. Okay. Now, just for the uh, lights and uh, fans and all, you, you need very light voltage, very low voltage, that is about 60 voltage of the current, right? But uh, when you want your air condition to uh, run, your heaters to run, what do you do? The voltage requirement of the voltage is high. Okay. So uh, uh, for an air condition to run, uh, the requirement of voltage is about 1000, the voltage that you need. And uh, for that laser current, if you want to cut anything, the, uh, your uh, iron or anything, iron uh, uh, plate or anything, you need higher voltage. You, you need that concentrated voltage from one point that it has a power enough to cut that iron sheet. In the similar way, when you need, you, when you are doing very deep thought process, when you are doing a uh, high voltage work in your body, you need higher voltage. Like otherwise on an off average, the prana is flowing and we are doing normal day to day work, which doesn't need very high, uh, concentration of very high energy, right? We can do that, but for, for a 
better work like uh, higher thing you can see those magic and all that happens but they, uh, they are, uh, some of the people they can create light from nothingness what is that that is a higher concentration of energy that they can create light out of nothing they can levitate out of nothing how do they do it by concentration by increasing the voltage of that prana in there However, that same prana flow in five different directions. But when you merge all those five pranas into Vyanvayu, you can create wonders, you can create magic. Because then the concentration of prana becomes one. And whatever you feel, whatever you want, whatever you think becomes true. So let's understand uh, the first Apanvayu where it uh, rotates in the body and what kind of work it is connected with, what kind of uh, which uh, chakra it, is it connected with and what work does it do in our body. Can we have uh, the first Apan Vayu? Yes. With you? The first one is Abhanvayu. Abhanvayu is located below the navel region. Its function is to excrete waste products. Its movement is downwards and thus takes care of gravity. Its seat is in the Muladhar Chakra and Swadhisthan Chakra. And this Sapan Vayu is responsible, this Sapan Vayu is responsible for excretion, that is your urine and stool. And uh, during the birth of a newborn, this Sapan Vayu works. So it's important, but however, if these Vayus become imbalanced, we suffer from urinary tract diseases, we suffer from constipation or uh, diarrhea or any kind of stomach related problem. We suffer from uh, the uh, anus related problems. Okay, so this Apan Vayu, the balance of this Apan Vayu is really very important. In fact, all the Vayus are important. So, can we have the, uh, now the other uh, video, Ravi, that is Saman Vayu? And let's yes. see where the Saman Vayu rotate in our body. It activates and controls the digestive system, the liver, intestines, pancreas, stomach and their secretions. Its seat is in the Manipur Chakra. So this Saman Vayu, Saman Vayu controls, is controlled by Manipur Chakra. As Apan Vayu is controlled by your two chakras, that is uh, Muladha Chakra and Swadishan Chakra, they control. So if these chakras are well balanced, these Vayus are also well balanced. And if these Vayus get imbalanced, the chakras get imbalanced, and they suffer from diseases and the problems related with these Vayus, because the Saman Vayu controls the digestion in our body and controls the function of your liver, adrenal gland, uh, then uh, your triple bomber is uh, located here, okay? So adrenal, liver, your pancreas, your uh, stomach, and all the juices that it creates, and uh, even uh, 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 all your digestion and all is controlled by your Saman Vayu. So if Saman Vayu becomes imbalanced, 
we suffer from indigestion we suffer from all stomach related problems a lot more we know that what all problems we go through okay and now the next one is called pranavan let's see where it rotates and which chakra is uh, controls this pranavan can we have the fourth video ravi yes pranavayu it is a force by which the breath is drawn inside so it is associated with the organs of respiration together with the muscles and nerves that activate them its seat is in the anahat chakra so obviously anaha chakra controls this vayu and uh, so the activity of lungs heart and your uh, blood circulatory system is controlled by pranavayu and if that becomes imbalanced so you know the balancing of all the chakras are important because all these chakras control everything in our body once the chakras are well balanced all these vayus are well balanced all these organs are well balanced all the endocrine glands are well balanced all our body parts are well balanced so chakras need to be well balanced in our body because uh, by default the prana uh, your uh, apan vayu rotate in the downward position saman vayu rotate and only in your stomach area pran vayu rotate in the upward direction what does yogi do to merge all these three they do lot of asanas pranayama and all and by doing that they merge they bring their apan vayu upward and they pull their pran vayu downward and they merge both the, all the three vayus into their saman vayu and by doing that they again the flow of prana become more powerful as i said that uh, for a bigger work for a bigger instrument we need higher uh, voltage in the similar way for a bigger work for high thinking and all we need higher voltage of prana higher flow of prana and in the upward direction where all the vayus merge into one dhyan vayu so next you need to understand the udan vayu which rotate only from here to here can we have the fifth video uh, ravi yes udan vayu it controls the area of the body above the neck activating such as the eyes nose and ears thought and consciousness of the outside world would be impossible without it its seat is in the vishuddhi chakra so udan vayu which controlled by a vishuddhi chakra so if the sense organs are not working can we get all the knowledge of the outside world no because these five sense sense organ, uh, organs are called exit doors of the body so they are the exit door because through these sense organ we receive knowledge they are open we receive like we can see from our eyes we hear we taste we smell and we feel they are again controlled by our brain our uh, your lower brain controls the sensory organs fine and they are controlled again by your vishuddhi chakra and udan vayu controls all these let's uh, understand the last one the vyan vayu where its seeds are and which uh, chakra controls this vyan vayu can we have the sixth video ravi
जबी तेज नो वॉल्यूम यू लैप टू प्ले इट अगेन Sorry, let me do it again. Yeah. Why? It pervades the whole body, regulating and controlling all movements and coordinating. the other prana it acts as the reserve force for the other pranas and its function is in the distribution of nutrients and energy through the entire body its seat is in the agya chakra so what is the purpose of yogic asanas and pranayam and meditation and all if you get to see the purpose of all these obviously to awaken your kundalini shakti that we learn and deeply if you get to see to merge all these four values that is apan vayu saman vayu pran vayu udan vayu into vyan once you do that once we get to achieve that but obviously hard work tap a lot of meditation and all then only and kriyas then only we successfully we can do that but it takes a lot of time tap and uh, knowledge okay once that happens then a person doesn't or yogis there's no need to breathe in take oxygen or exhale inhalation and exhalation is not required as you know uh god has given us everything in our body it has created this wonderful human being with all their problems and the solution into this body that's what it does so uh if we are uh, enlightened enough or if we have the knowledge enough there's no need to uh take anything from the outside world our body is capable enough to take care and uh, no need to inhale or exhale so for that and uh, plus the main purpose of yogic asanas and all to merge all these four values to merge all these five values into one and and by doing that then the energy flows throughout your body and in the upward direction and this full concentration of uh, energy and whatever you want whatever you uh, wish becomes true then in true sense our body becomes like that kalpa vriksh it does whatever we wish for but again it need a lot of sadhana tap and uh, the sadhus and all they uh, they actually successfully they do that you must have heard about a lot of sadhus who do uh, bhumi uh, uh, who do jal sadhana who do bhumi sadhana means they take jal samadhi or bhumi samadhi and then after 2 3 years they come out or after few months they come out by doing that that means they don't breathe in or breathe out how do they survive they survive by merging these five vayus into one into pravyan vayu by doing that there is no need to inhale or exhale you must have heard about it in fact all of us we have done that all of us we have done that when we were in the womb of our mother we were surrounded with with that liquid with that fluid and we used to inhale we we inhale we exhale with that liquid we 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 were alive in that liquid right you uh, we all know that so we are all born yogis but we forget we forget in that in that maya jal we forget everything so by doing tap by gaining knowledge we start really understanding all that thing but from now we can take baby step what is a baby step by doing meditation regularly that's a baby step 
by doing that regularly then we what do we do we keep that sadharipu away from us or we start decreasing that sadharipu that is kaam krodh isha eka lob mo that is uh, desire anger ego jealousy uh, then your uh, attachment greed that only create that maya jal around us and it doesn't let our uh, intellect mind to take over because it create that uh, uh, thin layer of uh, dust on our intellect mind by doing regular meditation and all what we do we clear that dust by doing that our intellect mind become more active once that happens we start gaining knowledge whatever is already there we start getting introduction with those knowledge which is already inside us but we have forgotten it we are ignorant towards it so let's hear the last uh, video again where it shows what happens when we merge all the five values into one into gyan value can we have the last video now ravi yes prana is the basis of life and can be directly controlled through the breath yogis who can survive for days underground where no air can penetrate have mastered the technique of completely stopping their breath these yogis concentrate on the prana as a point of light in the mid eye brow center where their consciousness is completely absorbed in that light the breath stops automatically prana still remains in the body but there is no breathing process there is no absorption of prana no elimination no function of prana and apana but only of Vihana. So, prana is the tangible manifestation of the higher self. Pranas are thus subtle energies which work together, but with specific functions, and move through the body, through the nadi. i know it's a little deeper knowledge but it's all a fact so you will say how does the science work it uh, work on it but you must have heard so we have heard about the yogis and all who do that they have reached their intellect mind their uh, consciousness has reached to that level where they have achieved it in fact they don't monopolize it all of us we have that but as i said we have forgotten we have that ability in us but we don't know how to utilize it we all have that but we need proper sadhana as i said earlier one day of meditation or one day of school do you think we will uh, achieve the phd degree where you need about 20 25 years of regular sadhana regular studies in order then only we get what we want to achieve we achieve what we want to achieve but it needs regular dedication dedication studies and everything it takes a lot of time and we we need that knowledge to gain that knowledge we need that we need to give that much of time so in the similar way maybe we will not be able to achieve what those uh, yogis have achieved but at least our life will be much more beautiful because the sadharipu will be under control and will be start we will start using our intellect mind more once you start using your intellect mind more then there is no confusion once there is no confusion so whatever you do your karmas are always right you know that whatever you are doing is for the right thing and you, there is no confusion again as i said so you'll be always happy you'll be peaceful you'll be calm that's what we need from our life isn't it that is our final purpose of our life to be happy to be joyful to be peaceful 
to be calm, to be loved, to give love. Isn't that the purpose of our life? By doing regular meditation, that's what we do. Because we get connected to our intellect mind. Our prana, our energy system start uh, 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 rotating in the single upward manner. Once that happens, we achieve whatever we want to achieve. And that gives, a pos gives us positivity. So whatever thought we get, even that becomes true. That's, that doesn't that we, uh, doesn't uh, that what we aim for, that all the positive thoughts comes to us and it becomes true. So our intellect mind actually becomes that kalpita which fulfills all our desires, all our positive desire, not the negative desire. All our positive desires become fulfilled. And we start uh, that positive cycle around us. So positive karmas, positive and good future, which awaits for us. It's all in our hand. Nobody can give us. We can't blame the divine power for it. That what have I done? I don't get whatever I want. But are you working towards it? Are you doing whatever you have to do? So that's what the thing is. Now today, if we learn about those uh, mudras, we, we will not be able to do meditation. So uh, the group meditation, you must know that it's very, very powerful. Whether it's on Zoom or you are doing, physically you are doing in a group. So uh, let's do meditation and next time we will talk about the mudras in connection with these five punch vibes. Because with the help of the mudras, you can actually again control these punch vibes. Mudras are again very, very effective. And uh, you immediately see the result of these mudras. Because these mudras are uh, created when these yogis sat in the deeper meditation. And they saw how you can control these values, these elements, and these meridians in the body by controlling, by doing hand gestures. So there are three, four kinds of mudras. There are head mudras, there are body mudras, there are hand mudras. Because uh, uh, like uh, uh, your, uh, uh, they have locks, they are mudras containing uh, in connection with your locks and all that mool band, uh, swadishthan band, and all those bands. But we'll be talking one by one in each classes of or each webinars of us. So today, let's do, uh, get connected with our uh, meditation. I think we have time only for 27 minutes of meditation today, Ravi, since a lot of talking happened today. Not the 46 minutes, only 27 minutes since we have can we have that meditation? I think we have a 37 minute. Uh, let me see. Uh, it's. I know it's late for that. Yeah, 37 minutes will be longer. So, till I, I wonder if we'll have a question answer session of, by doing 27 minutes meditation also. We have to go look Let's at see. that. Hold on one second. I only have the 37 minutes here. Can we play uh, that? 37 minutes will be late, huh, Ravi? Okay. Uh, 27, can you search? Because if you want, I can send you on uh, WhatsApp. I, I should have it somewhere. Uh, This one? That's uh, no, that is 37 minutes. Sorry. This is 17 only. Mm. This one again. Yeah, let's have this. 
Only that is months. only no no it doesn't have 18 minutes so you must be having uh in connection with all yeah maybe here just try it out 37 minutes uh, let me can i whatsapp or no you want Will be won't be enough time for me to convert it and bring it here. Uh, Aruna Meshwari said that I forwarded it. No, no, I have all of them. I I just don't have enough time to bring it here and convert it. Uh, why don't we do eleven minutes and then we do Gayatri Mantra? Okay, fine, okay. fine, fine. Yeah. Is that okay? Doesn't. Yeah. Uh, no, so that three omkars, three brahmaris, the first one, the first one, the first one. No, uh, just go go up uh, above. This one. Yeah, yeah, because. Uh, your positions sit with your back straight with your hands in gyan mudra resting on your lap close your eyes and relax relax every part of your body let's begin Now, Brambari. Now prepare yourself for Anulom Vilo. Assume the Pranamudra with your right hand and begin. 
left hand. One, two, three, four, five. Hold Jalata. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right in. One, two, three, four, five. Hold Jalata. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Left out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Left in. One, two, three, four, five. Hold Jalata. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right in. One, two, three, four, five. Hold Jalata. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Left out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Left in. One, two, three, four, five. Hold Jalata. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right in. One, two, three, four, five. Hold Jalata. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Left out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Release. Gently bring your right hand back to Gyan Mudra. It is now time for square breathing in sync with the Gayatri Mantra. Om Tatsavitarvarenyam bhargo Devasya dhimahi diyo yona prachodaya Om bhargo vasvaha Tatsavitarvarenyam bhargo Vasya dhimahi diyo yona prachodaya Om bhurku vasvaha tatsavitur varenyam bhargo Vasya dhimahi diyo yona Prachodaya Om Bhurku Vasvaha Tatsavitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Diyo Yona Prachodaya Chodaya 
So today, let's try something else. Are you all open for yoga nidra? It'll take about 10 to 12 minutes. Let's try that. You all can uh, sit in a sukhasana that is cross-legged. Or you can sit in a chair, relax. Keep your, uh, uh, take the back support. That will be important. Okay. Now just hear me out and do as I'm saying, whatever I'm saying, okay? And uh, keep your eyes closed. So hear the instruction and let's try doing this yoga nidra. It will relax and you will enjoy this day, let me tell you. Let's do that, okay? So relax. Sit in Sukhasana. Keep your back straight and relaxed. In case of back ache, take back support and close your eyes. You don't need to see, just close your eyes. Now, concentrate on your breath. Do not change the flow of your breath. Your breath is as it is after doing this wonderful pranayam is equal, rhythmic. So just focus on your breath once again. Focus on the triangular part of your body that is the upper lip area and your nose. Feel the movement of your breath on this part. Feel the coolness of the air while inhaling, while your inhalation. Feel the warmth of the air when you see on your upper lip area. Just shift your focus to this triangular part of your body. Feel the difference in temperature 
while inhaling and exhaling. Now, slowly and steadily shift your focus, your concentration to the top of your head, the Sahasra region, the crown of your head and feel the sensation in this part by shifting the focus. You feel the sensation. The sensation may be in the form of itching, something crawling, something moving, the movement of brown water. Just focus on that part of your body. Now, just as a scanner works, start scanning your entire body from top to bottom, part by part, piece by piece, as if you are a third person watching the scanner, movement of scanner from top to bottom and scanning your own body, letting your mind like a span a scanner pass through your entire body from top to bottom. Now, slowly shift your scanner to the front of your head. the forehead region, the third eye. Now shift it to your left eye. Let your mind work. Physically, you don't have to do anything. Your mind is scanning your entire body. Now the right eye, slowly shift that scanner to the right eye. The right left eyebrow, the right eyebrow, slowly and steadily, no hasty movement. Now left ear, right ear, left cheek, right cheek, left nostril. Right nostril, tip of the nose, your entire nose. Any kind of sensation, whether itching, tinkling, throbbing, throbbing pain, something crawling, or any kind of sensation will indicate that you are passing your mind through all these parts of the body successfully. The moment you feel any kind of sensation, simply move ahead. Now pass the scanner through the upper lip. Now the lower lip. Chin. Slowly let it move downward to your neck area, the upper neck, the lower neck. Now shift your concentration slowly to your left shoulder. Look at it. Your upper arm, your left upper arm, left elbow. Lower arm, left wrist, center of the palm, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, small finger, 
the thumb, your entire left arm and the left shoulder. Now let your scanner move to your right shoulder. Right upper arm. Right elbow. Lower arm. Right wrist. Center of the palm. Index finger. Middle finger. Ring finger. Small finger, thumb, your entire right arm and the shoulder, your entire chest now with your rib cage. Your upper stomach. Lower stump. Let it move downward to your upper thigh, left upper thigh, lower thigh, your left knee, sheen bone, and the Muscles, your ankle, the left ankle, now your left foot, the sole of your left foot, your toes, the big toe, second, third, fourth and the fifth, your entire left leg with your thighs, shin bone, calf muscles and your foot. Now shift your scanner once again to your right leg, the right upper thigh, lower thigh, right knee, shin bone and the calf muscles, right ankle, right foot, sole of your foot, the big toe, second, third, fourth and the last one, the fifth. Now, Your entire front side of the body is relaxed. We will do the same movement on your back side of the body. So relax your entire back of your legs, both right and left at the same time. Your hips, your buttocks the left and the right button, your corsets, your entire spine with your back, back of back and the spine, your back side of the neck, your back side of your head. Now your entire body is completely relaxed. You have successfully passed your mind through each and every part of your body. Now if you observe, you'll notice that your breath has become very soft and to slow down and has slowed down to such an extent that you're hardly even aware that you're breathing. Now your mind is totally under your control. 
to test your mind. The moment I name the spot, place that imaginary finger on that part of the body. Not physically, that's just imaginary finger. So place that imaginary finger on your navel. Any kind of sensation on your navel, again, itching, tinkling, throbbing pain, or anything will indicate that your imaginary finger is working. Your mind is under your control. Now place that imaginary finger on your heart. Feel the sensation there. Move that imaginary finger on the front, your forehead area, on your third eye region. The Agya Chakra. Feel the throbbing of your nerves in this part and the heaviness that you're feeling. Now shift that imaginary fingers to the top of your head where we have our Sestra Chakra. The Dalva region which is soft and the new one baby. Feel the throbbing of the nerves here. You will realize that all the heaviness from the center of your forehead has shifted to the top of your head. And now, the energy, you can feel it there. It's oozing. And in turn, you are feeling calm, extremely light happy and positive. Now, let's focus any, on any part, any one sense of Focus on our ears. Any kind of soft noise. Try to hear the dimmest of the sound around you and now visualize whatever you can hear with your eyes still closed let your ears work for your eyes the dimmest of the sound around you it can be anything Whatever you can hear. Now shift it back to your breathing. Which is still slow. Soft. Very slow. And steady. Now focus on your body and be aware of your body parts. Slowly move your fingers, slowly, just move, slow. Your toe fingers, rotate your shoulders, your head towards left and right and right and left. Rub your palms vigorously. Cup your eyes. And slowly open your eyes. Hurry. So that was your method. Very simple. But we have taken a lot of time, Ravi. We are 10 minutes up.
I know people. Whoever has fallen asleep, please get up. Do we have time for question and answer? I think I fell asleep. Ravi, I hope you not fallen asleep. Yeah. I fell asleep, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You were not supposed to. The mind had to work. The body had to get relaxed completely. The mind had to work. It was that really, was the main motto behind it. It was really good. Thank you. <laughs> okay, our first question okay. is, what mudra can be used for sleeping disorder and constipation? Uh, let me get back to you all slowly and steadily. Right now, I don't know any mudra that can uh, put you under deep sleep. This yoga nidra will work. So whenever you have problem relaxing your body, you can do this yoga nidra. And there are a lot of yoga nidras available on YouTube. You can open it up. You can actually type yoga nidra. You will see. However, if you want mine, I'll have to record it. Since because of the lockdown, I can't go to the uh, studio and record the whole thing. And at home, I can't record it. I'm so sorry. I'm still not able to understand how they are being alive without oxygen intake and carbon dioxide exposure. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> what we have a lot of mysteries we have in our body, and we are not aware of that. We have a lot and lot of mysteries. There are a lot of research going on, but you can hear about those uh, sadhus and all. In fact, there are so many sadhus who, who remain alive and they have not eaten anything since many years. If you have read that book, uh, Autobiography of a Yogi, he has mentioned uh, about such sadhus and yogis. And he met, in fact, he has pictures. Uh, he took the pictures with those uh, yogis, yogini and uh, sadhus and all, who have not eaten. So there are mysteries. And, but all the human bodies are capable of doing those uh, magical things. Again, as I said, we, we have created that dust on our... Uh, the prana is not flowing freely. If our 72,000 channels are working properly and we can direct the prana in one direction, that is the upward direction, we ourselves, will be able to create such magical thing and all. We are ignorant towards it. It happens. You can type it, you can search for such uh, yogis and uh, sadhus and all who, who do it, who has done it. So, uh, we have a request to do yoga nidra again in another session. Uh, a lot of people have loved it. I hope, uh, I hope people have not fallen asleep, Sir Ravi. <laughs> <laughs> we also have a request uh, that can we have your sweet voice for Yoga Nidra in a uh, recorded format? So, again, as I said, because of this lockdown, because Mumbai has, uh, Bombay has not yet opened. For uh, that, I'll have to go to a studio. Because I don't have that yet. I just did it at home, which is not capable enough. It is not that clear. If you want, I'll send it over, but it is not clear enough. Um, and whenever I go to studio, obviously I will do that. And I'll send it over. Thank you. So there's a comment that I did slow my breathing in a point that it was so low and small portions. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Uh, can you meet such yogis during Kumbh Mela? Uh, they are, they, uh, they, but we don't you know because we are not allowed to go near them. But those yogis, they do come only once at that time to take dip in that yoga. Yes, there are, there must be those yogis. And they are capable of many, many mysteries, many, many magical things and all. Yes, we do. Can you suggest we, a book? Yeah. Sorry. Can you suggest a book for yep. mudras? 
Ah, uh, yes. In fact, I'll just show you. I, it is right in front of me. It's called Mudra Vigyan by uh, Yoga Publication Trust, Munger Bihar, India. And it is written by Swami Satyanand Saraswati and Swami Niranjana, uh, Niranjana da, uh, Nanda Saraswati. I'll send you the pic on this. Yeah, you can uh, send me a link or uh, take a picture of the uh, front page of that I'll, book. I'll send, the, I'll send you the picture of this. I'll and then I'll the put it on the uh, site for everyone to, uh, sure. if they want to. Sure. Thank you. But on the net also, you will get a lot of information. Uh, yeah, but net at times give wrong information. But this book, I believe, because, uh, you know, this institute in Bihar, Munke, and they say it's the best institute in India. So what obvious uh, yoga has come out from uh, India. It's institute in the world. And the genuine. I follow this uh, institute's books and also I have many books by uh, this school. And follow them to the team. Question to Mudra. So if you put your fingertips together, it keeps energy in. What happens when you touch the bottom of a finger? And if the finger is bent down and fingers are up, is one calming and the other... I'm sorry, I'm not okay. uh, Which Mudra are they talking about? Uh, I think they're talking about all the Mudras. All the mudras, as I said, now we I've so far only explained about the mudras of uh, which are connected with our five elements. So uh, I did explain in the last video that uh, we have five fingers and five elements. So uh, thumb, uh, uh, it's fire, ether, uh, sorry, uh, air, ether, earth, and uh, water. So whatever you want to control, you have to press it with your thumb that is a fire element and that gets 